What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind episode 167. This is where we go back, give you all of the tech news, news, news from the past seven days in one single video. And everything from the Galaxy Z Fold 3 with the under display camera, we got information on that and how good and bad the camera is gonna be on that and information about that. We have information on One UI 4, info on so much stuff from the Z Flip 3 to the Galaxy Watch 4 and like live images of that and everything in between, BTS, so much guys. So check out this week, let me know what your favorite news story is of the week and we'll see you in the next one. First story of the day is about the Microsoft Surface Duo 2, a phone from, well, Surface Duo 1 was from last year and I was really very excited about that phone. I got the phone and a lot of the things about it kind of failed to impress me. The camera wasn't that good. The speakers weren't that good. And then just the overall software experience wasn't really up to snuff at the point. And some things needed to be improved. Well, it looks like there's some leaked images of this phone and the Microsoft Surface Duo 2 is gonna keep the same form factor. So you can have that hinge in the middle with the two displays on each side. But the big thing is they're gonna now have a triple camera setup. It's basically gonna look exactly the same as this Galaxy Z Fold 2. So you're gonna get the three cameras down and then the flash on the side there and allowing you to get hopefully better cameras with an ultra wide, I'm assuming a telephoto and then just a regular camera on there as well and you should get better photos. And then the other couple things I would like for them to improve and give us stereo or quad speakers, better performance with a newer, better processor, hopefully like a Snapdragon 888 or maybe even something newer or better. And then also the software experience to be very gelled in, which was pretty good, but it really needed to, at the time I had the, the phone to really improve upon that. But Surface Duo 2 should be out if it does come out September, October of this year. Speaking of the Galaxy Z Fold 2, we're gonna talk about the Z Fold 3 now. Z Fold 3, cases have been leaked out of what it's going to look like with the cases that have the S Pen slot. And it looks like the S Pen slot is basically gonna be about right here on the phone and you will insert the pen right here and that's how it will work. And then when you wanna take it out, you just slide it out and you can use the pen. So I guess that's a good little fix for, you know, not having the, 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 the pen going directly into the phone like a lot of people would want to. It being housed in the case, again, straight kind of in the middle. It does make it a little bulky back here, but ultimately you need to put it somewhere and I think that might be the best place to put it is probably the middle. If you disagree with me, where do you think would be the best place on a case for the S Pen on the Galaxy Z Fold 3? Let me know in the comments below. And the last story of the day, also about the Galaxy Z Fold 3, adds a little bit of disappointment, especially in the camera department, because remember, the camera on the Galaxy Z Fold 3 will sit underneath the display. It's not gonna be stuck out like you can see here on this Galaxy Z Fold 2. It's gonna be underneath the display, and some more information about the quality of the photo has been leaked out, this time by Evan Blass, and it lowers the resolution to an ungodly number that's quite depressing and I think it's gonna tell you a lot about the quality that we should expect on the camera of this main display. So this tweet, like I said, comes from Evan Blast and he goes through a couple of specs here, such as the Z Flip 3 having a 6.7 inch internal display and on the outside cover display, you're looking at a 1.9 inch cover display. You're also looking at a 12 megapixel camera on the rear, two of those and then a 10 megapixel selfie. When you jump down to the Galaxy Z Fold 3, 7.6 inch internal, you know, that's the big display, and a 6.2 inch external display. Uh, triple 12 megapixel cameras on the back, a 10 megapixel on the cover display, that's that front skinny display, you'll get a 10 megapixel camera there. But on the main camera, on where you, you know, on the main selfie, on the big display, you're looking at four megapixels, guys. Super low, that's like a number out of, I don't even know, nine, not 19, but 2000 and, 2010 or something like that, 2012 phones, this is ridiculous. And then also two optional S Pens, so you'll be able to get the Pro or the Fold Edition. 
Um, not totally positive. I, I think they'll look different and I would assume behave a little bit different and fit better probably, I guess, uh, with the phone if you get one of them. And then also both phones IPX8, which means water resistance, no dust resistance in there. So let's talk about his tweet a little bit more. Let's dive a little bit into what he says. Now he says, first of all, the S pens, Again, it's tough to decipher between the Pro and the Fold. I know the Pro will have Bluetooth capability, so you'll be able to do all those air actions and uh, the camera shutter button with the pen. The Fold Edition, I don't know if you'll have that same stuff, and I assume they'll look a little bit different and act a little bit different. They would have to, you would think. And then beyond that though, the four megapixel selfie camera now that's gonna be underneath the display of the Z Fold 3. This is, it's gonna, they're talking about this camera right here on the Z Fold 3. It's just weird. It's super weird, like the, the information that's coming out about that. And to add a little bit more into that, Ice Universe also put out a tweet saying the current underscreen camera technology cannot satisfy both excellent photo quality and perfect display at the same time. You must choose one. Samsung chose the photo quality, which is weird because we keep hearing it's not gonna be that great. So the Fold 3 will have more obvious sense of mosaic, meaning that you're gonna see some, like that mosaic effect underneath, or on top of the display, I should say. While Xiaomi and ZTE chose the perfect display almost, you can't see any traces of the front camera, but the camera picture quality will be slightly weaker. We have two stories today. One is official straight directly from Samsung. It's actually on the Samsung website. And the other one is about updates that they've done to their own apps within the GoodLock software. Now, Samsung GoodLock is a customization app that allows you to fully spec out and customize your Samsung Galaxy software to heights and, and places most phones haven't even been. It's really an awesome app, so you should check it out, Samsung GoodLock. You can find it in the Galaxy App Store. But with that said, they tend to update the modules within the Samsung GoodLock app all the time and it's no different. Check this out. This is about the Galaxy Z Flip 3 and Fold 3. As you can see from Max Jambers, it says One UI 3.1.1 on Fold 3 plus Navstar allows you to quickly switch between apps. And when we look deeper into this, you know, a bigger photo of this, you can see Navstar. It says that uh, you can be supported. Added show task stack feature for quick app switching in the navigation bar on the Fold 3 and tablets. And then on the other one, the Multistar, it says fixed the linked menu for some function in the Fold 3 and Flip 3. So obviously Samsung putting the name out and the word out there that the Flip 3 and Fold 3 obviously do exist and those are gonna be the names. And, which sounds good as well, is that the Samsung GoodLock and the modules themselves are being updated or are updated now to completely take hold of that phone when it comes out later in August. Last story of the day, again, about the Galaxy Z Fold 3 and actually their new Galaxy watches that are coming out as well, the Galaxy Wear watches. And Samsung goes deep, deep into this and they announce a special S Pen built specifically for the Galaxy Z Fold 3. So let's dive into this article that they posted on their website. If you wanna read it in its entirety, it is linked down below like all of my new stories always are. But ultimately the first little piece up here says the next era of smartphone innovation is about to unfold. And obviously they're playing with our, our emotions right there a little bit with the title of that. And when we look at the third paragraph at the bottom there, it says Samsung Electronics is poised and ready to unveil visionary purposely mobile technology for a better world. In a few weeks, we will unleash our products and greatest Galaxy Z series to reshape the smartphone category and completely reimagine your experiences. Next little bit down where it says Samsung is bringing more people into the fold. There's a couple of paragraphs in the middle and the bottom there. It says collaboration enables us to build mobile experiences that make your life easier and better. And basically they go on to say that they're really entrenched um, with Google and also with Microsoft and other new partners as well. Because when you get to that last paragraph, we're also working with Google to enrich our foldable ecosystems with popular apps and services for our third generation of Galaxy Z phones. We have lined up even more partner apps that make the most of the versatile fold out format from hands-free optimized video calling with Google Duo and watching videos in flex mode on YouTube to multitasking in Microsoft Teams. Our foldable ecosystem will offer a wealth of seamless and optimized 
experiences. And when we jump down a little bit further to that second paragraph, it says, I hope you will join us as we debut our next Galaxy Z family and share some foldable surprises, including the first ever S Pen designed specifically for foldable phones instead of unveiling a new Galaxy Note this time around. We will further broaden beloved Note features to more Samsung Galaxy devices. In the meantime, mark your calendars and tune into our unpacked event on August 11th to see what unfolds. So a few things to grab from that article, just to kind of re-go through what it said. Obviously the new specifically designed S Pen for the foldable line. It's gonna be a big selling point for a lot of people, especially fans of the Note series that want a new phone, but you're not really getting it. I mean, you could get it with the S21, wherever that is. I have it over here, but I don't have the S Pen next to it, but you know, you have this, but then maybe you want something completely different. Maybe you want the Galaxy Z Fold 3 and you're like, you know what? It's gonna be an amazing experience to write on the S Pen with this, and I think it will. I think it's get more people that are coming from a non-foldable phone over to this, and they're gonna use the S Pen with this. I think you're gonna be like, well, I've been missing so much on this, and I think the people that have the fold phones and they wanted the S Pen, it's gonna make them happy, and then people that already have this phone and maybe don't even know about the S Pen, it's gonna make them happy if they get the experience of using it with it. So overall, it's gonna be a big get for the fold line and then talking about the collaborations with other companies. I know they already have collaborations with Google and Microsoft as well, but it sounds like they're gonna dive deeper into that with more companies taking advantage of that foldable display. And then also talking about the Wear line as well, where they're you know collaborating with Google on that to take it to the next level. We have one story today and it's all about one UI 4.0, which is the newest and latest and greatest software, that's a lot of ands, for the Samsung phones. Now, which phone is it gonna come out for first? When is it gonna come out in beta? When is the full release going to come out? And what are some of the things that are gonna be updated for it? Well, that's all in this story today. So let's jump into it. So this tweet is coming from Chun. Chun starts off by saying, since One UI 4 beta update for the S21 series is in August, and it is confirmed, I think that this is the perfect time to leak some information about the next One UI update. The update will have some changes ab about icons, colors, and some Android 12 feels. Most likely they will adapt the Android 12 material design. He says, One UI has better optimization for the Snapdragon 888 and Exynos 2100, meaning you're gonna get better performance with it. It's gonna have minor Knox updates, that's their security software, and possible makeover of the Samsung Notes app since a lot of the devices support S Pen now. He mentioned that this is because a big makeover is planned on that app anyhow, so let's see when they roll it out. Also, he says Samsung wants to speed up the update time, so August for beta and November for stable. The stable update could delay until the first or second week of December. Now, before we dive into everything he's saying, there's also another article coming out of Korea, and this was posted on tizenhelp.com, saying that the One UI 4.0 beta for the Galaxy S21 will start in September, and that a poster on a Korean site put that up saying that. So what do we have here? So first of all, the One UI 4.0 beta software is gonna come out on this phone first, the Galaxy S21 series. So if you have that phone, you can look forward to possibly signing up for the beta software of that. The other piece of it is that it's either going to launch the beta anyway in either August or September. We'll see. I wouldn't be surprised if it falls back into September due to the fact that they have a couple of new phones coming out in August and they might want to delay things just to make sure everything's good on the older software for the Z Fold and Z Fold uh, Z Flip 3 phones. And then also in terms of some of the updates, doesn't seem like it's going to be a massively different update in terms of the software experience that you get with the phone but it will update some of the things such as the Notes app, maybe the feel a little bit of some of the animations and the way things react on the phone. But again, not a, doesn't sound like anyway, doesn't sound like a huge update to the look and feel of the phone software overall. We have a few stories today. The first couple are about the Galaxy Z Flip 3. Are you excited about this phone? I feel like most of you guys are more excited about the Galaxy Z Fold 3. But with that said, Let's jump into this. So this is coming from, and this is coming from 91 Mobiles, but ultimately what they're showing off here are the Galaxy Z Flip 3 cases. And what we see here 
is that these cases, at least some of them, will have little handle things to make it easier to hold the phone, like little hooks, little rings, stuff like that to make these a little bit easier to hold. The colors are pretty interesting and loud and got a ton of personality. I like the idea of having rings and little hooks or whatever you want to call these on the phones to make it easier to hold. I already use some of this stuff on my phone, such as pop sockets and ring holders. This is great. What do you guys think about these new cases from the Galaxy Z Flip 3 line? A little bit of good news about the Galaxy Z Flip 3, as you can see right here, the Galaxy Z Flip 3 seemingly has 25 watt charging capabilities after all. There was news and rumors that it was only gonna be 15 watts, so it looks like that's wrong. 25 watts obviously is faster, so you should be able to charge your phone slightly faster than previously thought, and this is just good news overall. And then just a little bit of a reminder, this is coming from Let's Go Digital, saying that the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 is gonna be water resistant, as will the Fold 3, so I've talked about that, but just kind of a little bit of a reminder to keep the good times rolling. The Galaxy Z Flip 3 and Fold 3 water resistant, up to three feet, 30 minutes, um, no dust resistance, uh, at least what they've tested, so if you need dust resistance, you'd probably wanna keep away from these phones. Now, before we jump into the last story, I do wanna give you a couple of reminders. One, I did a live show today, and if you wanna rewatch that, it's linked down below. You can watch it in its entirety. It's like hour and 45 minutes or something like that of me just answering your questions and I uh, brought some of you guys on live with me to talk. So I'm going to try to do that every Thursday, at least for the next probably seven or eight weeks and do something like that for an hour or two, uh, talk to you guys online, as long as there's something interesting to talk about. The other bit of uh, information is, uh, if you wanna support the show, there's a new button at the top. You can do it on your phone or on your computer. It'll say thanks. If you click that, you can give uh, a little donation towards the show. But what's cool about it is it makes your comment stand out. It bolds it out, puts a little bit of flair to your comment and makes it completely over character is that a, it's not even a word make you gives your comment tons of character versus anybody else that didn't give quote unquote thanks on there so check it out it's a way to support the show and make your comments stand out with that said let's get into the last story of the day and that is official samsung trailer for galaxy z fold 3 phone aka unpacked check these screenshots out so ultimately they started off showing off, you know, talking about the phone and you see a screenshot showing a Galaxy Z Fold phone and they keep going on in the video and they say, is good, good enough? And then they jump over to showing off the opening of the Fold phone, the Z Fold 3, and a city within it. And then they keep doing that. You see the city kind of falling and, you know, you see the city definitely more prominent in the Fold. And then you see get ready to unfold that's towards the end and it finishes up with august 11th live on samsung.com if you want to watch that entire video it is linked in the description down below but yeah an official trailer more just fuel on this fire we're getting super close to the flip three and fold three line and the watch four and the buds two and so many products just in a few weeks that we're going to find out and be able to pre-order and order and get in our hands we have two stories today. One is about the Galaxy Note phone, and the other one is about the new S Pen. First, let's talk about the Galaxy Note phone. As you know, there's gonna be no new Note phones. There's gonna be no Note 21, Note 22 possibly, but really, I mean, a lot of you guys were looking forward to a Note phone coming out this year, and it's not, and it may never come back due to the fact that we're gonna get an S Pen with the new Galaxy Z Fold phones. We got it with the S21 Ultra phone, and who knows what other devices are gonna go and get it as well. But that hasn't stopped Sam Mobile from putting out a petition that they wanna get over to Samsung for people to sign at this point right now, and I'll link it down below if you wanna sign it, they have 15, over 15,000 people that have already signed. It says, let's get it to 25,000. At 25,000, this petition becomes one of the top signed on change.org. And if you read the petition, it says the Galaxy Note lineup of smartphones is loved by millions of fans around the world. And they are pretty disappointed when Samsung said it wouldn't be launching a new, new flagship in 2021, partly because of the chip shortage that has gripped the industry. We at Sam Mobile love the Galaxy Note series as much as everyone else. Galaxy Note smartphones 
smartphones, with the exception of the Note 20 Ultra, have always felt stronger than the S series flagships. They follow each year in terms of specs and design, and it's something we are going to miss out on this year. So here's an idea. If not 2021, how about a new Galaxy Note flagship sometime in the first half of 2022? Maybe Samsung could skip the S22 lineup this year and give us a Note instead. Samsung could keep all of its flagships lineups alive by alternating between them all while keeping all of its fans happy at the same time. So what are you waiting for? Help us get the message to Samsung we want a new Note and we would like to get one as soon as possible. Again, it's linked down below. Click on the link before, I mean after I should say, you watch this video and take advantage of signing the petition to hopefully get Samsung to make a Note phone next year. Last story of the day is about the S Pen Pro. We don't know that much about the S Pen Pro until today. This tweet comes from Chun. Chun put out a tweet that says that the S Pen Pro is gonna have a 0.7 millimeter tip it's going to have 4,096 pressure points. It can be used with the Z Fold 3 without damaging the screen. It's going to charge via USB-C. It attaches magnetically with a few cases at the back of phones. And the price is going to be around $70 in the UK. So, I mean, there should be two S Pens. There should be an S Pen specifically built for the Z Fold 3, which we definitely don't know barely anything about. And then we have the S Pen Pro, which should be compatible with not only the Z Fold 3, but also the S21 Ultra. This S Pen Pro, even though it doesn't mention it, should also have Bluetooth built into it so you can do the gestures, you can use it as a shutter button for your camera, and there you go. First story of the day is about the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2. We don't, we know, I mean, we know a fair amount about them, but so we, there's some more information that has been leaked out, this time from Roland Kwan on his Win Future website. I'll link it down below if you want to read the article in its entirety, which I would recommend that you do. But anyways, let's check out some of the information that he talked about in the article. And these buds, you've seen them before. This is what they ultimately look like, very similar to you know, like a Galaxy Bud or Bud Plus. Uh, some big takeaways from the article though, Samsung's going to rely on integrated artificial intelligence and touch controls for easy operation of the buds. Two, in terms of splash and sweat resistance, they are IPX2 standard. They also come with Bluetooth 5.2. In terms of battery life, you can look forward to 20 hours of battery life with active noise cancellation, but if you turn that off, you'll get up to 29 hours. You can get one hour of listening time with just five minutes of charging. And the retail price in Europe looks like it's gonna be 150 bucks. And I assume it's probably gonna end up being that in the rest of the world as well. Now, the more I hear about the Galaxy Buds 2, the more I'm kind of like getting excited about them. The fit for the, you know, the Galaxy Buds and the Buds Pluses was really, really good. I actually like that fit better than what you get with the Galaxy Buds Pro. The, again, I've said it in videos before, the Buds Pro do fall out of my ears a little bit. And these won't, or at least I don't think they will. So I'm looking forward to that. And then they've got a lot of the same features that the Buds Pro already have as well. So it seems like a no-brainer. Last two stories are about the Galaxy Z Fold 3. One's gonna be exactly how much you can actually see the under display camera. The other one is going to be a couple of things that we you know, might wanna know about the camera that are interesting that someone has seen off the screenshots. And I'll go with that one first. This information's come from uh, the Galox who did you know, the work for me. It makes my job easier. He says that the small Galaxy Z Fold 3 changers compared to its predecessor, and these are physical changes. So one is that the antenna lines are in different places. Some are in the lower, some are in the higher than before. The SIM slot is now at the top left versus the bottom left on the Z Fold 2. So if you're, you're again, your SIM, SIM card slot will be at the very top left of your phone. The frame is now all flat, no curves unlikely than previous generations. So, you know, interesting, you know, just a couple of things that he picked up on for the Galaxy Z Fold 3 versus the Z Fold 2. And uh, it just seems like it's gonna be, again, the, the design of it a little bit more refined, lighter, things don't stick out as much. And I think that's a win overall for the device. With that said, let's check out how much you'll actually be able to see that under display camera on the Galaxy Z Fold 3, and remember, it's a four megapixel camera, so don't expect these magnificent photos from this camera, but with that said, let's check this out. So this was uh, tweeted out by Snoopy, 
and Snoopy shows it off. You can barely see it. You have to really look at it at a certain angle, but ultimately you can see a little bit of kind of pixelization, a little bit of fuzziness. If you look at the letter, the, the second O in Snoopy and just work your way straight up, you'll see what I mean. It just kind of sticks out. It's smack dab in the middle of this photo, but on the phone it would be a little, you know, be centered off to the right. And uh, you can see it a little bit. Is it gonna affect really anything? Probably not. And uh, the big thing for this is that it's, again, it's probably not gonna bother you from viewing things. It's really gonna be, are we gonna get a camera that's any good to even use? And I know I hear from you guys all the time, who uses the camera with the, the phone like this? I do, I, some other people do too. You should want to, it's like huge display. And it's nice to see that your big, ugly face on the camera, on this big screen. So why wouldn't you want to see it? I always do it. I use this selfie more than I do the uh, outside one, but still interesting to see this in another photo of how it's really going to look on the Z Fold 3. Thanks. We have a few stories today, so let's dive right into the first one being about the Galaxy Watch 4. Now this watch should be unveiled August 11th and then be released probably later on in the month that you'll be able to actually have it in hand. And remember, this is gonna run Wear OS, so it's not gonna run Tizen with that said, let's check out some live images of the Galaxy Watch 4. Now this uh, leak is coming from Max Weinbeck. 91 Mobile's also leaked it out, but he leaked it out, and Max himself, without any watermarks on there. And uh, you can see the watch overall, it, not a very exciting design change from anything that we've seen previously with the Galaxy Watch series. There's no folding watch or anything like that. Not that you would even want a folding watch or a watch that potentially was square, which I do want it squared, but ultimately, you know, this is what you're getting. And at least the new thing on this would be Wear OS with the Google apps installed on here. And one thing to take note of, Mac does have, Max does have a, a separate tweet where he says that One UI for Wear OS does look identical almost to the Tizen software. So if you use that Tizen software, Wear OS 3 on the Galaxy Watches is gonna look very, very familiar. Are you guys excited about those Galaxy Watches? Let me know in the comments down below. Are you gonna stick with one of the older ones that you have, the two, uh, Watch Active 2, the 3, the one of the first ones? Let me know in the comments down below. Next up, as you can see right here, we have some wallpapers, the specific ones that will be on the Galaxy Z Fold 3 and Flip 3. And I probably won't be rocking any of these. These are you know, kind of the butterfly and flower type look to the wallpapers. I'm not a huge fan of these. Um, I don't know about you guys. Like, do you guys love these wallpapers? I will not be using these. I like the gradient type color, just plain color wallpapers. But if you want to download these, I'll link it down below. Next up is about the Galaxy Unpacked event, which will be August 11th, and a Korean boy band that'll probably and most likely be playing at that event or for the event overall, and it's probably gonna end up being the biggest Korean boy band and maybe the biggest band in the world right now, and that is BTS. Because it looks like Samsung Australia's official site on Twitter has let the cat out of the bag, saying a famous K-pop group is performing during Galaxy Unpacked, what's your guess? Unpacked rumor number 82. It's so simple to see because BTS had their own uh, Galaxy earbuds and a special, what was it, the S20 edition, I think it was, of the phone. So it makes total sense, or was it S10? I don't even remember at this point. But ultimately, it's gonna be BTS. So if you're a BTS fan, or you know people that are, such as my wife, I will let them know that uh, BTS is due to be playing August 11th at Galaxy Unpacked. And the last story of the day about the Galaxy Z Fold 3, as we've probably talked about and heard, they're gonna have a 256 and a 512 gigabyte version. The 512 gigabyte version in the past with other phones has usually come with 16 gigs of RAM. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to hit most places having 16 gigs of RAM. Almost nowhere, it looks like, will have 16 gigs of RAM, except probably, and it looks like China. This tweet comes from Tron and Tron is in here saying that the Fold 3, 12 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes of storage for most of the world. And then if you want the 16 gig RAM, 512 gigabyte storage, you're gonna have to go to China to get that or get it you know, somehow shipped to where you live, which you probably wouldn't want to do because if you run into a warranty issue, it's gonna be a big pain in the butt like myself. Glad I have the American version. I live in the USA. I cracked it, if you didn't see that video, check it out. It's, it'll be one of the videos at the end of this video. You can just click on it and watch it, but I broke my Galaxy Z Fold 2 
for the second time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. New videos every single day. My question out to you guys is, do you think we need 16 gigs of RAM in phones at this point on Samsung phones? Or do you think 12 is a perfect number? I, I actually think 12 gigabytes is perfectly fine for everything that anybody really does at this point, especially on a Samsung phone. Let me know about your thoughts though. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you down the road.